Hi, I'm Ankit Verma. I'm currently working as a project fellow with Dr. Sridhar Siva Sibbu and Dr. Pranod Iskaria at CSL Institute of Genomics and Integrative Biology. For the next few minutes, I'll be talking about rare genetic disease of the heart uh, along with the example of a case of directed cardiomyopathy. So, uh, as we know, the major cause of the death all over the globe uh, generally top the list of uh, cardiovascular diseases. Along, uh, if, if I would look to give the example of uh, several other disorder, cardiovascular disease is one of the uh, major cause of death in India as well. So, CVD is majorly causing approximately 70 million deaths uh, all over the globe every year. There are several forms of the cardiovascular diseases which involves coronary artery disease, stroke, rheumatic artery disease and then other cardiovascular diseases. So for current discussion, I would be, I would be more focused on particular two types of uh, congenital heart disorders. So basically that involves uh, cardiac uh, channelopathies and cardiomyopathies. So as my topic is uh, based on rare genetic disorder of the heart, I will be describing about the majorly about the uh, rare genetic disorder of the heart only. So there are majorly two types which is involves cardiomyopathies and uh, channelopathies. So these are the uh, uh, diseases which are classified on the basis of its prevalence and pattern of inheritance. So under the category of the cardiomyopathies, we have uh, the dilated cardiomyopathy, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and uh, uh, restricted cardiomyopathy, and then arrhythmogenic ventricular, uh, right ventricular cardiomyopathy. In cardiac channelopathy, we have uh, several uh, types out of which long QT syndrome, Brugada syndrome, CPVT, and ARVC is, uh, is like one of the which comprises one of the major category of cardiac channelopathy. Now there are different kind of pattern of inheritance in the uh, rare genetic disorder of the heart. It can it could be autosomal dominant, it could be autosomal recessive, it could be accessing or it could be uh, mitochondrial disorders. So there are uh, lots of prevalence. Uh, the prevalence of these disorders are very low. That's the reason they are coming under the category of rare genetic disorder of the heart. Now uh, for the present talk, I will be discussing more about cardiomyopathies. Now. The reason, uh, first of all, we should understand why we uh, should focus on genetic disorder of the heart. So there are several reasons which I uh, collected uh, from the literature that could be possible and that could that could be the reason we should uh, start studying about the rare genetic disorder of the heart. Now, basically, uh, the genetic disorder of the heart are actually fatty. So and as well as there is no fat, uh, there is no uh, well. Uh, established treatment available right now and uh, importantly inherited heart disease runs in the family so uh, because it can be inherited from uh, the parents uh, to their offspring we should actually start uh, studying them and provide them accurate diagnosis that we can actually find some measurements or some uh, approaches by which we can actually uh, uh, give a warning sign to the uh, clinician or to, or to the patient. Again, rare, rare cardiac disease are gen gene specific and therefore the possibility is that, that they can be uh, managed clinically and accordingly. So uh, um, importantly, uh, because of the uh, high cost uh, for the drug treatment as well as uh, the burden, the high cost and uh, the high cost to spend for the children in rare cardiac disorders Due to the high cost of the treatment, which involves medications and uh, uh, several other uh, facilities which are required, or even uh, the the procedures which are required for the accurate diagnosis of the congenital heart disease, we should actually uh, uh, it's actually it will create a burden on the economy as well as the social uh, life of the patient. Due to the high cost of the treatment because of the medication prescribed and the procedures involved, the congenital heart disease developed a burden on the economy of the country and it has impact on the social uh, life of the patient as well as the family. Now, if we look into the Indian scenario, approximately 10.3% of the total deaths in India is subjected to cardiac death. 
as well as sudden cardiac death claims approximately 4000 lives every 1 lakh individual in india now important you know, the thing which we have to notice that there is no particular genetic studies has been performed in india till date which can actually provide a spectrum of the rare, rare genetic disorder of the heart in indian population importantly india has a heterogeneous population and uh, which is different from the western population which is more like homogeneous now it actually demands a need or it actually raises up a requirement to study uh, to, uh, to, to, to frame a study by which we can actually study it at a to study the genetic disorder at a higher level now coming on to the topic which i would which i'm going to describe uh, for the uh, uh, for the few minutes for my talk so cardiomyopathy uh, is a topic which i selected so cardiomyopathy is actually involving uh, a disease of the heart muscle so uh, this is a normal heart and uh, there are several forms of the cardiomyopathy which involves hereditary cardiomyopathy hypertrophic cardiomyopathy restrictive cardiomyopathy under the category of hereditary cardiomyopathy the ventricular enlargement happen it actually causes the lv dilation which leads to systolic dysfunction and then lower in the ejection fraction in the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy we can see the ventricle walls become thick and stiff which causes diastolic dysfunction now because of that uh, dysfunction impaired ventricular filling happens and small edvs and low cardiac output result in the manifestation uh, of or the phenotypes of the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy under the category of restrictive cardiomyopathy certain features clinical features involves ventricle walls become stiff but it may not may or may not be uh, thickened the fall become rigid and this actually leads to diastolic uh, restriction in the diastolic filling it also involves diastolic dysfunction now there are certain measurements in the procedures utilized by the clinician for the diagnosis of the congenital heart disease it involves ecg echocardiography and there are certain other procedures which involves ultra monitoring cardiac catheterization cardiac ct scan and cardiac mri all these uh, procedures are actually helping for the accurate diagnosis at the clinical level now there are certain clinical features symptoms involved with the cardiomyopathy which involves breathlessness with exertion or even at rest swelling of the legs ankles and feet bloating of the abdomen due to fluid build up it actually causes a cough while lying down while the patient is lying down it also causes a fatigue the pay of the another manifestation involved irregular heartbeat that feel rapid pounding or fluttering chest pain is common uh, uh, phenotype of the uh, cardiomyopathy then there are certain other uh, feelings which a patient go through like dizziness lightheadedness and fainting now all these uh, congenital heart disease or rare genetic disorder of the heart involves a genetic link now there has been certain studies published which shows that the congenital heart diseases um, or specifically i would talk about the cardiomyopathy where uh, there are certain genes which are involved in uh, muscle contraction are involved are, are required for the proper functioning of the heart now if these genes if these, if these genes undergo mutation this lead to the abnormal manifestation or certain feature related to the cardiomyopathy which actually even lead to the uh, sudden cardiac death in the patient now there are certain genes which are uh, which you can see the dcm scm rcm all these types are having the particular genes which are categorized into particular uh, region now dcm has approximately 53 genes which are reported till date which could be potential candidate to diagnose a which could be potential uh, uh, factor uh, to contribute to the phenotype of the DCM. Then, then in, uh, similarly, HCM, RCM, NCCM are having the uh, certain genes designated or identified by the studies performed all over the globe, which actually uh, says that uh, these genes, if you study, if you find the mutation in these genes, this can be uh, helpful for the particular or accurate diagnosis and as well as which may help in the further treatment of the patient now i would like to explain the rare genetic disorder of the heart by giving one uh, one of the case uh, which we have received under the uh, project called uh, guardian so uh, in particular case which i'm going to explain we have received uh, a family where uh, the multiple siblings death was there and the case was involved with the consanguinity now we have received the sample from the couples uh, as well as the baby 
which are having the multiple babies death now out of now is the clinical report uh, of the, the the babies who died at the age of 6 months involves left ventricular hypertrophy with dilation severe left ventricular systolic dysfunction which was later diagnosed to be dilated cardiomyopathy now there was a, also look, also some history of the uh, history involved where uh, the patient uh, uh, had uh, two other relatives which are affected which are found to be uh, which are which are dead because of the unknown reason but we actually don't know it could be because of cardiomyopathy or some other reason but there was a uh, sudden cardiac death involved in the family also now when we checked for the pedigree analysis we found that the patient was having uh, the, the patient was born out of the uh, second degree consanguinity and uh, finally the patient uh, the the, the, fam, the couples uh, consulted the clinician and uh, the certain clinical findings was uh, carried out by the hospital clinic and which involves during that fetal uh, the, when the uh, child was not born during the uh, um, fetal echocardiography at the 7 and 8 month of the gestation period it shows that the systolic function was not proper of the both the ventricles the, it was not proper now post natural echocardiography confirmed biventricular hypertrophy with severe biventricular dysfunction and M mode echocardiography shows that the ejection fraction was around 26% now the normal range is 50 to 65% that means the ejection fraction was found to be lesser as compared to the normal range there are certain other clinical findings uh, uh, noticed by the clinicians uh, which involves the ECG abnormality which, which is like a large QRS complex secondary opioidizing changes with inverted T waves the clinician prescribed the medication of car carbidolol in a lepril digoxin furosemid and spironolactone even with the medication prescribed the child uh, deteriorated progressively for the 6 months of the age and later is come at the age of 14, 14 months now the case uh, was referred to the guardian consortium for the genetic testing because of the uh, because of the prior uh, findings by the clinician they suspected that it could be the related guardian of the case and it's running in the family so it could be uh, uh, helpful if we uh, if we if we could identify a particular mutation by using the the pipeline used by the Gar uh, guardian consortium so guardian is actually the program which in uh, guardian which in stands for genomics for understanding rare disease in real life network is is uh, uh, running under the lead organization IGIB Institute of Genomic Genetic Biology and funded by the CSR Institute of Genomics in CSIR uh, India and then basically the uh, Guardian uh, is, uh, address certain issues which involves large population with diverse genetic pool and uh, it actually focus on the endogamy where certain cohort is having the uh, uh, intercaste marriage and all and they uh, we, could, we could actually uh, find the mutation or if we can find the genetic lesson present in that particular cord and actually get go back to the family and help them uh, to, to prevent cer certain uh, practices then uh, we are presently we have 100 collaborators and uh, approximately 30 major uh, clinical research institutes which are uh, making a uh, guardian as a large rare disease network in India so basically in uh, the pipeline of the guardian involved we uh, refer uh, the, the, clini the case of the uh, rare disorders are referred by the clinician where we where they send the sample of the uh, either uh, of the patient by uh, it could be either it could be uh, blood or it could be saliva and we have perform we perform the gen genome sequencing basically exome sequencing to uh, identify a particular uh, mutation by using the computational based approach and if uh, we could uh, we actually analyze something novel we go ahead with uh, modeling the particular mutation in gbr fish also now with the help of the exome uh, uh, guardian consortium there are certain uh, studies which are found to be useful where we are where we actually utilize the utility of exome utilize the power of exome sequencing to diagnose uh, the accurately diagnose uh, certain rare genetic disorder which involves genetic disorder of the skin uh, for example uh, epidermal blue simplex acrokeratosis versiformis and epidermal non symptomatic theosis so these are the uh, dis uh, disorder of the skin which we have uh, identified by using the uh, technology uh, behind the garden consortium that is exome sequencing now 
exonts are nothing but also utilized for uh, further uh, uh, identification of the genetic lesion and immune, immune, immune disorders like so excelling gamma globulinemia it was also useful for the uh, identification of uh, mutation in the metabolic disorders like uh, mineral body axis and certain other disorders now by uh, seeing the utility of exome sequencing uh, uh, in diagnosis of uh, rare genetic disorder we have gone ahead and uh, use the same technology for identification of genetic lesion in the, in the uh, present family also now general population pipeline of the exome sequencing involves we take the we isolate the genomic dna from the uh, biological sample obtained from the patient we fragment the genomic dna into small pieces and then we prepare the library out of it we use the uh, custom made uh, probes to capture the only coding region that is exome and we uh, uh, sequence to uh, get the information out of uh, those coding regions then we analyze the uh, particular mutation if, if a particular mutation present in the data set by using the computational based approach so there is a systematic pipeline available at IGIB uh, for uh, prioritizing the variation and that we use for for all the regional disorders which we analyze now we have uh, for the particular family uh, of the dietetic cardiomyopathy we have we have taken the sample uh, from the trio blood uh, was taken obtained from the trio that is parents and the affected child parents were phenotypically normal so uh, now dna was extracted from the uh, samples and library was prepared using the lunar next uh, capture technology and the sequencing was performed the raw reads obtained from the sequencer uh, was quality checked and low quality reads were trimmed uh, from the data and good reads were aligned to the reference you know using the stampy and bwa uh, tools the duplicates were marked using the picard tool and variants were called using the platypus and further the uh, the call variants were eroded using the anovar now this is a data analysis summary of the present case where we have uh, we have actually obtained around 26 million reads from the index case and 97 or and 76 million reads from the parents respectively now we also obtained total number of variations which are uh, around 67000 in index case which were further uh, uh, classified into exonic variation non synonymous variations synonymous variation frame shift variations and stop gain and stop loss now from the total number of variations we accepted only exonic variations and we started prioritizing the variations using the pipeline for the uh, or the strategy which we have used to reach to the the, uh, the putative candidate so from the exonic variation which were around 30,000 we uh, extracted the only deleterious variations which involves non synonymous variations uh, frame shifts variation which uh, which were around 17,000 from that we have identified the variation present in the 53 DCM candidate gene and around 119 vari variations were identified then we have moved ahead to look for only the rare and novel variations which were around 87 and we have only look when we because the consanguinity was involved we have only filtered out the homogeneous variation and raised to the and and we uh, further compared the variation whether the variation was shared with the parents or not so out of that we identified only one variation which are, which was present in the uh, mip pc regime uh, which are present at the chromosome 11. The variation was a stop gain variation, which caused the introduction of uh, stop codon at the 208 codon. Now, probably the effect of the variation was truncation of the protein, premature truncation of the protein. Now, this variation was novel and not reported in exact and 1000, uh, 1000 genome and 10 control databases. Now, once we identified the variation, we have moved ahead to uh, uh, look for uh, look for the detailed summary of uh, the gene what is this what is the function of the gene how this gene uh, could be the potential candidate for the phenotype which is manifested in the patient now mip pc region it stands for cardiac myosin binding protein c spans 21 kbs and comprising 31 35 exomes it encodes a 140 kbf uh, protein c mip c and it contains uh, 1274 amino acids which are structurally arranged into C0 to C10 domains. 
Now, CMIP uh, protein was found to be present in the cardiac muscle cells and regulated cardiac muscle contraction. The major function of the CMIP C is for circumambulation and maintenance of normal cardiac function. Now, basically, this myosin binding protein C undergoes phosphorylation to attach to the thick filament and prevent breakdown of the protein required for muscle contraction. Now, probably since because it is having the uh, mutation and, and it actually the potential candidate, we have further uh, look for what can how this mutation particular mutation could be responsible for. Uh, the the nature of the protein and how the, how the alteration of the protein is actually uh, leading to the manifestation. Now we have identified that this Q208X that is a stop codon mutation, which is actually truncate the protein, was present at, which is actually causing the truncate truncation of the region from C1 domain to the complete uh, C terminal portion. Now this mutation was found to be uh, cause a premature truncation by the protein tool and. This truncation has been, uh, and in general, in general overview, the truncation of the mid PCD region has been pre previously known to alter the uh, functioning of the C MIP protein. Now, in the present case also, since the domains as are, are losing from C1 to C10, and phosphorylation site, which is required for the further attachment to the thick filament, is also lost. This probably lead to the abnormal functioning of the C MIP PC. Now, to understand the autosomal recessive inheritance in DCM, we have. Uh, we have tried to uh, look for how much uh, in a, uh, this particular inheritance is contributing to the phenotype. Now, recessive is actually the recessive inheritance is very rare in case of the DCM. As we can see in the pedigree, the the particular family which we are studying right now it was a consanguineous family, and there was a three uh, offspring were affected, and all died uh, at the after, within a one year of their uh, age. Now, parents were found to be career and they were non affected. They were not manifesting any particular phenotype related to DCM. Now, to uh, understand how this recessive inheritance is uh, the cause of the, DC, uh, the DCM, we have found that the autosomal recessive inheritance are extremely rare and account for loss, uh, less than 1% uh, of all familial cases of DCM. In particular, MIPC3 gene, this gene is already known to cause dilated cardiomyopathy and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. And the recessive inheritance in MIPC the gene has been previously described in DCM as well as in HCM. Interestingly, from India already, South Indian Asian population, uh, from the study by Dhanda Bhai et al., which shows there is a recessive inheritance in the 25 base pair relation in MIPC the gene, uh, uh, has a lethal uh, manifestation, and therefore, the recessive inheritance in DCM is rare, but it is lethal. That, that means the the variation which we have identified in this particular case actually the 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 putative uh, candidate which can which is actually causing the death of the patient now to further uh, confirm our findings we have performed the sanger sequencing uh, for the trial and we have we found that the parents actually were the career which we which was further confirmed by sanger sequencing and uh, the patient was found to be homozygous now the conclusion from the study involves exome sequencing was successfully uh, uh, identified a novel homozygous pathogenic mutation in baby clinically diagnosed with erratic cardiomyopathy. The inheritance of the recessive in the case of DCM is uh, very rare. It's a very rare even uh, in general, and we have very rare findings by capillary sequencing. Now, this actually shows that the exome sequencing can be utilized to solve the diagnostic dilemma of the uh, the rare genetic disorder like uh, the, the rare genetic disorder of the heart like DCM and it could be a uh, potential tool which can help the patient for the cost effective and timely diagnosis. So I would like to acknowledge uh, the clinicians from the Madras Medical Mission which involves Dr. Vibhaskar, Dr. K. Siva Kumar, Dr. S. Siva Mani, Dr. Rajesh Kumar and uh, the contributors from the Guardian Consortium also that is present at the IJB, uh, Shamshuddin, Rajit, uh, Ramika, um, Ambili and the the investigators of the uh, garden project, Dr. Nadeskar and Dr. Sri Dasiva Sibu. And I, I acknowledge the funding from the CSIR for the, this particular uh, project. Thank you.